Hey, this is Alex from Graysand. In this video, I'll show you how I built a gable roof frame for my garden pergola using recycled hardwood for the rafters. I'll walk you through each stage of the process and provide you with all the mathematical formulas to build a gable roof frame. There are a few important details and some basic trigonometry involved in constructing a gable roof frame. I've included a detailed explanation of all the roofing calculations at the end of the video for anyone that's interested in a breakdown of the math formulas and process. Okay, to get started, the first tip is to mark the rafter set out onto the top plate and ridge beam before the ridge beam is installed. I've done a couple quick calculations then mark the positions of the rafters onto the ridge beam and the top plate. I'll also mark the center of the ridge position onto the top plate so I can attach a temporary post that will hold the ridge beam to the correct height while I install my rafters. If you only take one tip from this video, make sure that the top of the wall frames and ridge are installed square, parallel and level. If this is not done correctly, the chances of the project going to plan will diminish. I'm constructing a 25 degree gable roof frame. Here are my math formulas to determine the ridge height. A gable roof frame is one of the most visually appealing roof designs while also being one of the strongest and simplest to construct. But there are three common reasons why the rafters won't fit correctly. I'll add these common reasons or mistakes why rafters don't work out at the end of the video with the maths formula breakdowns. Please consider hitting the like button or subscribing to the channel if you're enjoying the video. Once the ridge is installed to the correct height and centered, we can move on to cutting a template rafter. This template rafter will be cut to our calculations and used to check that the rafter is sitting perfectly against the ridge and on the top plate. I'll use this template rafter to check the four corners of the roof frame and to make sure the length and bevels are all good. I need to cut 8 rafters for each side. Firstly, I cut a 25 degree angle at the top end of the rafter, then measure down 15-12 millimetres and mark the short point of the 25 degree angle. I then come down 50 millimetres from the short point and mark and then square across from that point. So this is the way that I like to cut my common rafters. There's lots of different techniques and methods on how to cut a common rafter, but this is the most efficient and enjoyable way that I like to do it. As I'll be using 100mm batten screws or bugle headed screws to attach the rafters, I'll pre-drill the ends just to make it a bit easier to install. Once all the rafters are cut, I can go through my block plane and take an arras off all the timber just to neaten up the recycled hardwood. Here's another useful tip. If you spend the time and get your top plates and beams straight and square, and all your rafters are set out to the correct size. Once you install all the rafters to your ridge beam, it'll be pushed straight by the roof frame and rafter set out. I'll still install a string line to the center of the ridge beam just to double check that it's all gone in straight. I'm using 50 by 70 millimeter old recycled Australian hardwood as the rafters. They're originally from a 100 year old house that was being demolished close to where I live. I already used them to build a timber screen, so this is the second project they've been involved in since I recycled them. I enjoy using recycled hardwood as it is strong, durable and full of character and history. When I get it for free, that's an added bonus. And don't forget to stick around to the end of the video as I'm going to go through all my mass formulas and drawings to do with trigonometry and building a gable roof frame. With this roof frame, I could probably get away without needing a ridge support under each end and just use a collar tie on every second rafter. But with this roof frame, I've decided to add a support under each end of the ridge beam. Once I get one support in, I can take away the temporary ridge beam and finish the roof frame. I'm not sure why, but it's really quite satisfying doing a lot of cuts through a piece of timber and then chiseling the rebate flush with a sharp chisel. This is actually the second stage of this project. If you want to see the first stage where I installed the posts and the beams, just look at the previous video that I've made. So that's about all there is to it to building a simple gable roof frame. I just need to go through, finish cutting out my ridge supports, install them, and then repeat the process on the opposite side. That's about everything you need to know in regards to building a simple gable roof frame. As this is only a garden pergola, I'm not going to worry about adding any bracing. I'm just going to screw it all off with 100mm bugle screws. If this was a structure for a house frame, 
the gable roof would need speed bracing on top, tie downs and some extra details but as it's only a garden pergola 100mm bugle screws fitting everything together will lock it into place nicely. Once I've finished installing the ridge supports I can remove the temporary posts that are used to prop up the ridge. Okay that's a gable roof frame finished. I'm happy with the end result. All the rafters fit plumb and tight against the ridge beam and the ridge beam finished straight. I decided to paint the H3 treated pine white to give a nice contrast between the recycled hardwood and the new framing timber. Here are the three most common mistakes as to why rafters don't fit perfectly into a roof frame. Number one is because the mathematical calculations are not correct. Number two, the ridge beam is not set to the correct height and the third is that the ridge beam is not square and parallel to the top plate. Okay, so here's a more detailed explanation of my drawings and roofing calculations. The first step is to work out the ridge height or the opposite side of the right angle triangle. To start the measurements, hit 10, 25 degrees on a calculator. This will give you 0.466. Next, I'll multiply the 0.466 by the half span. The half span is 1393.5. But firstly, I'll need to take away half the thickness of the ridge beam. As the ridge beam is 45 millimeters thick, I'll take away 22.5 off the half span. This half span now equals 1371. I now multiply 0.466 by the new half span of 1371. This equals 638 millimeters. This figure is the height of a right angle triangle from the top plate. The true height of the ridge will be the rafter width that sits above the top plate added on top of this 638 millimeters. In my case, this is an extra 50 millimeters that sits above the top plate on the rafter. I hope this drawing helps to explain it a bit better. The 50 millimeters is the amount of the rafter that sits above the top plate that is just above that red dotted line where it says 50 millimeters. It's actually more useful to figure out the bottom of the ridge height measurement. So what you gotta do is figure out the ridge height measurement, which is our 688, then take away the ridge width, which is 187 in our case. This gives us a measurement of 501 millimeters from the top plate to the bottom of the ridge. This will allow you to connect a block on top of a prop that the ridge can sit onto and be supported while you build the roof frame. The other measurement I need to obtain is the rafter length that's going to be cut at 25 degrees. The formula I use is adjacent divided by the hypotenuse which is some basic right angle triangle trigonometry. This formula is 1.371 divided by cos or cosine 25 on the calculator. This equals a rafter length of 1.512 millimeters from long point to short point. There's also a way you can double check this measurement just to make sure all your calculations are correct by using the Pythagorean theorem. I usually do this just for fun to confirm all my measurements are correct. The Pythagorean theorem looks like this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So with my calculations and my numbers, this is what it's gonna look like. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 1.371, which is our half span, squared plus 0.638 squared. So that equals 1.879 plus 0.4 07. This gives me a number of 2.286. I'll square root this number. So what's the square root of 2.286? This equals 1.512 millimeters. By these two different formulas giving us the same number, we can confirm that our rafter length is 1.512 confidently. Okay, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you feel like you've got anything from the video, if you learnt something, if you've enjoyed it, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.